Hey, I'm Vicki Genfan for the final free lesson in our video blog series, which is previewing the course, 30 Strumming Patterns You Must Know. Uh, we're going to end with a funk. We're going to take it out with the funk. Uh, we're still here in Frankfurt, outside of Frankfurt. Uh, so thanks to Falco again for letting me set up in here and get this out to you guys and gals. Uh, this is a really straightforward, funky little strumming pattern. And what I hope is that I'll give you a basic pattern. And I really like you to play around and see what kind of little fills you can come up with. I'll show you a couple of examples and then you are on your own with, uh, you know, you all know some of these licks. Or if you don't, you'll make them up. Or you'll listen to somebody else and you'll rip it off, which is how we learn. So. It's a, it's a very standard blues, funky do that. And here is our drum loop. I'll play it for you. I've got a G13 chord and a C9. Those are my two chords. One, two, three, four. down is pretty simple. Take it slower. <clears throat> Start out with just a single note on my single picking of my bass note. Let's so make sure you all have this chord with me. It's a really cool, uh, it's a movable chord, movable dominant seven if you don't play any of your open strings. In this particular case I'm playing my E string which is giving me a lovely six or thirteen. So we've got 3rd fret, and this is G, 3rd fret 6th string, skip the A string, that's going to be muted by my 1st string, gently resting on it. We've got our 3rd fret 4th string, okay. 3rd string we're playing in the 4th fret, okay. And then the 2nd string, we're back to the 3rd fret. So I've got 3 fret every other starting with the low sixth string fourth string second string pinky on that third string in the fourth fret okay so my a my fifth string is muted and letting the e ring open on the first string one and da, 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 da. chicken scratch let's just try this chord together crisp this part of my hand right here okay one whoop, one and 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 at that point I'm relying on my left hand muting so that I can chicken scratch and if I'm if I'm pressing my notes down I so it's one is on my fifth string, third fret, the C. So I want to hit that as accurately as I can. So what am I doing? 
It's amazing how we find so many strange ways to mute strings. But um, I sometimes bring my thumb around to mute that E string, or sometimes my middle finger, which is actually hanging out on the fifth string, third fret, it actually touches it a little bit. So play around with that. The rest of that chord, to C9, it's a dominant nine. You can, how else could you do it? Well, you're basically going to have to bar those top three strings. So third fret, I've got my third finger, first string, second string, third string are barred. Index finger is laying here on the E in the second fret, fourth string, and my C is on the third fret, fifth string. So one and two. same exact. Da, 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 da. Chicken, chicken, chicken. And da, da, da. when I'm doing my chicken scratch again, I'm muting with the left hand, so everything's just resting lightly. Down, resting. Okay. So, let's put it together. One, two, the G, three, four, one, and two, chicken, 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 C, and two, slide. So I'm just taking those top three strings, three, two, and one, sliding them up to the fifth fret. One and two and three and five. One and two and three and four. And if you want to count, one and three and three and four and one and three and three and four and one. Dive in, dive in, dive in, dive in, dive in, dive in, dive in. Whoops. Just sliding the top strings and after a while that hurts my finger I don't know about you so let's try both chords together and I'm alternating every second time I play the C9 I'm gonna do the slide okay so here we go one two three four Sometimes I alternate my bass hit by hitting it twice. Okay, you're free to do that. Spice it up a little bit that way. I'll um, show you just a couple of little embellishments that I was doing and then I really want you to play around and find some of your own. Um, I was taking this uh, off of the G13 chord, which is just a, I'm barring the fourth, third, and second strings in the third fret and then hammering on the third string in the fourth fret. fourth string. Okay, so
something onto the C, which is just a third, uh, second fret, fourth string. So I'm just doing an E, F, F sharp, which is leading me back to my G. So it's falling a one and two. So there's 16 notes. My little doodads. Let me see what you can do. Let me hear what you can do. There's so many coolish, simple, cool riffs that you can use to embellish that progression and that strumming pattern. Um, in funk, I mean, you know, so much of what I do is by ear and I've not had formal training. Um, so I may not get all my terminology correct. Forgive me for that. But um, what I know from my own experience playing funky, funkish music is that mm, a lot of times simple is better. Simple is funkier. So one note in the right syncopated place at a particular upbeat uh, can just really drive a groove like nothing else. So don't always think about having to fill up the space, um, especially in funky music. Think more about where might I throw in that one accent? Where might I throw in an unexpected upbeat? Or something like that. Because that really, if you're in the pocket and in the groove, uh, those kind of accents and just syncopated um, hits really, really make something irresistible to move to. Okay, so... Um, Thank you so much for tuning into these lessons and this video blog. It's been a great honor to be able to share some of these things with you. And I'm real excited about the course that's coming out soon. 30 strumming patterns you must know. Um, there's tons more. There's always more. And my wish, always when I teach, is that I can just kind of push you a little bit and then you can find your new ideas and your new things. Um, that's what happens with me. Whenever I look at somebody's lesson or take a lesson with somebody, which I do at, at various points, I always, it always pushes me to find something new on my own. So hopefully this sparking your creativity and uh, your innovation. And find me at my website, say hello to me, vickigenfan.com, signing off. I'm going to play it up to tempo. Join me and uh, come on, baby. Oh! Bye.